Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Anthony. And I'm Pastor Mari. Something we say here all the time at City of Life is that generosity is our privilege. That means we get to give. That's right, and we've made the privilege of giving super easy for our church family through text to give, online giving, or even giving in person. You can make sure your gift is given when and how you'd like. Personally, text to give is our favorite way to give because it brings generosity right to our fingertips. In addition to our tithe, we're able to use text to give to be obedient when God impresses on our hearts to give an offering. Proverbs 11:24 says, "The world of the generous gets larger and larger, while the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller." We encourage you to be part of the dynamic life of a giver. Hey, I'm Pastor Ivan. We want to let you know how you can get connected with your next steps here at church. If you're here for the first time, we'd love to connect with you after service in our Welcome Center. There, our team will let you know what's going on in the life of our church and how you can be a part of it. Another great way for you to be involved is becoming a member here at City of Life by taking our Step 1 Connect course through Growth Track, which happens every Sunday at the beginning of the month. Our goal is to help you get connected so that you can contribute and commit to the church family God has called you to be a part of. Head over to col.tv forward slash growth track to learn more. Church family, I'm Nikki, and alongside my husband John, we are your Dream Team pastors here at City of Life. We want to invite you to take the next step of involvement here and join our Dream Team. The Dream Team is a group of people who have discovered their gifts and passions and are using them to serve the Kingdom of God. Serving not only changes others' lives, but your own life as well. From serving on our production team, host team, worship team, guardians team, or City Kids, there is something for you. And we want to invite you to be part of the Dream Team and see lives changed through you. Take all three steps of Growth Track to become a part of this incredible experience, and we can't wait to see you there. Hey parents, I'm Lexi, your City Kids Director. And my name is Mia and I am your Icon Youth Director and we want to tell you all about the two ministries we have for your children and students. City Kids is our children's ministry here at City of Life for infants all the way to fifth grade. City Kids is so much more than glorified babysitting. Our services are structured intentionally to foster an environment that is safe and makes room for your children to learn about God on their level. Yes, and once your child graduates fifth grade, you can trust they're in good hands as they move on to Icon Youth. Yes. Icon Youth is tailored for middle and high school students with services that rotate between powerful teaching nights, engaging small group nights, worship nights, and of course, the bash. Here at City of Life, we place a premium value on the next generation. City Kids classes are available every Sunday and our check-in opens at 9.10 a.m. and 11.10 a.m. And Icon Youth meets every Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. We can't wait to meet you. Hey, I'm Pastor Justin. And I'm Pastor Amanda. And we serve as your executive pastors here at City of Life Church. Being part of a family means that you stand together in both the best and worst moments of life. And we want you to experience the power of being a part of a church family. So when God does something amazing in your life, we want to celebrate with you. And if things look difficult right now, we want to stand with you in prayer. You can submit both prayer requests and praise reports online at col.tv slash connect anytime. You also can scan the QR code on the screen right now. We want to know about what's going on in your life and our prayer team prays over these requests each and every week. If something amazing happens in your life, we want to know about it. When you get a new job, 
when you get the good diagnosis or when the miracle baby joins your family. Let us know so we can celebrate and rejoice with you. When things are beautiful, we want to rejoice, and when things are difficult, we want to stand with you. So no matter what life looks like, col.tv slash connect is how you get connected. Hey everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to the lobby. I'm Pastor Justin. My name is Nadiel. We're and so happy to be here. We are thrilled to spend some yes. time with you today. So give us a shout out there in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. We want to say hello. Our moderators are here. We carve out this time to get yeah. the chance to connect with you. Yeah, for to sure. Give an opportunity and to say we're in the exact same outfit. Yeah, we are completely matching. And if you're yeah. not wearing this, please go to your closet now. And wear get this. your black yeah. polo shirt yeah. and prepare for the lobby. That's the uniform for today. Yes, for sure. How you feel, man? I feel good. It's a great day. It's Palm Sunday. Big day today in the Christian faith. It's Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. Look at that. These are not the palms we're talking about. It's Palm Front. It's that Sunday. It's that it's Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> they can't hear you. Oh, it's that Sunday. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> we're we're so glad that you're here. with us. Yeah. Hey, so here's the question of the day. What is, since it's Palm Sunday, it's a day that commemorates the celebration of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Yeah. Since we're talking about celebration, it's like a parade, basically. What's the biggest celebration you've ever attended? Well, like, you know, growing up in between Florida and Puerto Rico, uh -huh. I have a very large Puerto Rican family. Okay. Whenever we do weddings, we go crazy. Actually, Ooh. this isn't even a wedding. It was a quinceañera. Oh, that's bigger than yeah, a wedding. Yeah, we flew out. Down back to Puerto, we've been living here in Florida for a while. We flew down to Puerto Rico to celebrate my cousin's 15th birthday, uh -huh. and it was just the party of parties. It was absolutely insane. We had like a caravan of cars. We toured. Wow. It was it was actually insane. I was like 10, but uh, we were up late, super late at night, super having fun. That sounds um, amazing. Sounds amazing. Dancing. And, yeah, yeah, and all my cousins, we Food. were all yeah, we were all kid age, so we were just going crazy, having fun, playing how to seek. All that stuff. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I remember one time I was walking with uh, my then girlfriend, my now wife. We were walking with some friends. <laughs> Shocking, right? <laughs> we were walking with some friends at a like a lake with a beautiful park and some like buildings, and we hear this loud music, <laughs> and so we're like, "That sounds really cool." I mean, I if I hear energy, I'm going toward it. I'm like a moth to the flame. Yeah. So I just hear loud music, it and I'm like, "What is this?" So I walk up and I press my face against a window because I couldn't see, and in Inside is a wedding celebration. All the, I mean, everyone is dressed up in traditional Indian, uh, Indian clothes, dancing beautifully. All this amazing, lavish wedding. And I'm looking inside, just like vibing with the energy, right? <laughs> and then someone looks at me and points at me and waves me inside. <laughs> Mind you, I'm in a t-shirt and jeans. They pull us inside, teach us all of these traditional dances. The food was amazing. We were there for three hours. This was night That's seven crazy. of seven. Oh my gosh. Night seven, seven of, of seven. seven. This wedding was amazing. The bride and groom were so welcoming to us. Yeah. Everyone, like, I left with my feet almost bleeding from, from dancing. dancing barefoot for three hours. That's insane. You look at a window, they're like, you can come in. And it's it was wild. the best ever. And I feel like that's how I want to be as a person. I want to wow. live my life like that, like, come party. Yeah. I mean, we've done that before. One time, one time near your house, there was, like, this, like, yep. Ran I don't even know what kind of music they were playing. It was this random concert, and then we went, yep. and we were dancing for like an hour and a half. Yep, I guess this is a pattern in my yeah, life. Just, yeah, <laughs> and yep. you, you had your shoes off there. Yeah, wow, there's a theme. Well, Palm Sunday, let's take <laughs> off the shoes and lift up the name of Jesus Yay. today. <laughs> it's going to be a okay. good one. Hey, lots is coming up here at City of Life, and we had helicopter candy drop Literally yesterday. yesterday. It was actually crazy. Incredible. Yeah. So much candy falling from the sky. That helicopter was very he, close. He like didn't, yeah. And he also had so much more candy than I expected. He just kept on dropping bag after bag. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. I was like, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll blast. The kids had so much fun. You're yeah. going to see a little bit about it later today in yeah. service. And so many great things happening. City of Life, Dr. Phillips is getting ready to launch. Yeah, we, last Sunday we had our intro service. Um, this was just a night where we kind of gathered at our location at Southwest Motor School and we uh, did just like pastoral team and then like the staff and uh, anybody who's interested in the service, the serving team, we all kind of just gathered and we had an incredible service. Yeah. It was so sweet. It was so special to be there and to actually see it all come to life. It felt like a church building in that Absolutely. auditorium and Absolutely. it was awesome. Pastor Jeff delivered an incredible word as well on remaining faithful in, uh, in our race as Christians and it was just so sweet. I think it was a perfect way to kick it off. Yeah. And then next week is finally like the day. Launch day. Yeah, it's launch day. 
Um, our team is currently out there right now. Uh, they're getting ready to prepare everything for next Sunday, Easter Sunday. Uh, so it's just really exciting stuff going on over that Dr. Phillips area. Yeah. yeah. Next Sunday, Easter Sunday, there is so much for us to celebrate. A lot. And there's a lot in our schedule. We have our Good Friday service yeah. this Friday. And then at our Kissimmee location, we have Easter service on Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Then we have Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11.30 at Kissimmee. And then 10.30 at Dr. Phillips. Yeah. And as our online community, we invite you to lean in to Easter week. We have some amazing opportunities for you to watch online for almost all of those service times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be, I mean, there's a lot. There's, if, if you've ever been, like, curious about, like, visiting our church, I know many people, what they do is, if they're looking for a new church in their area, they go online to see how yeah. it is online first. I feel like this is the perfect week to come by and to just check us out, especially if you're in the area. I would say, I feel like within a 45 to an hour. Easy radius within Easy. us, check us out. Yeah. I think Easter Sunday is a perfect opportunity to do so. Uh, and if you're near the Dr. Phillips area, check them out as well. Uh, one church, many rooms. Uh, so it's really incredible. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot to do, uh, a lot to look forward to. I went to Miami for dinner one time. So you, you can come wow. here. I went you to can... Miami for a day one time. A date? Dro no, a day. A day? A day. Ooh, a it's day. getting juicy. A day. A day. <laughs> I drove down with a buddy of mine. We went to a church service and we came back the same day. Look at that. Three hours. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that. Yeah, join us. And if you can't do that, Thursday night, <laughs> everyone is all, you're like, that's segue. Yeah, good job. It was good. <laughs> Thursday night, everyone's going to be together online. So we invite yeah. you to our Maundy Thursday service. This is going to be, like I said, Thursday night and it is. Yeah, it's an at-home guide. Yeah. So it's something that you can do with your family at home. Um, we're handing it out basically through social media and through our website. It's just a guide on how you can kind of commemorate leading up to uh, the passion of Christ with him washing his disciples' yeah. feet, kind of washing the fam the, it, it really is a tradition, washing the feet of those around you, your yes. loved ones, the same way that Jesus did for his disciples. Um, and it's just an incredible way to kind of commemorate what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing. So that's going to be provided to you. You can visit col.tv slash Easter yeah. and observe that ceremony with you and your family and friends along with the rest of our church. Yes. Also, if you're going to the Dr. Phillips area, you'll hear a lot more about this in our service, but we're also going to have an Easter egg hunt over there Woo! to kind of kick it off, kick off the festivities of everything. Uh, yeah, so right after Easter Sunday at Dr. Phillips, egg hunt right over there for the, for the little ones. Also, we are releasing a new single oh called Unbury Me. So it drops on Easter Sunday. This is yeah. just the beginning of all the new worship music that City of Life is releasing. Yeah. So make sure to keep your eyes out because it is releasing Easter Sunday anywhere music is streamed. We can't wait for you to hear it. Yeah. Um, incredible stuff. Next Sunday, actually, no, no, not next Sunday. Two weeks from now, we're doing something that we haven't done in a while. I wasn't Ooh. here when we did it, but you were saturate, Ooh. a saturate baptism service. Yeah. So the week after Easter, we're just going to have baptism pools laid out all across the auditorium. It's like blink. Yeah. And it's just people are going to get baptized. It's going to be absolutely incredible. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah. Amazing things are happening here at City of Life. And we want you not just to think about all the things that we are doing as a church, but the meaning of them. Yeah. Easter Sunday, we get to lift up the name of Jesus. Saturate service, we get to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit according to the commission Jesus has given us. Yeah. And we get to see the kingdom built through the church. What a privilege it is. So yeah. as our online family, we covet your prayers. We covet your support. We are so grateful that you lean into what's happening here because honestly, it wouldn't be the same without you. We feel your prayers. And when we get messages that people are watching from all over the world, we recognize the great privilege it is to be a part of the body of Christ. Like I get so yeah. emotional on Easter week, thinking about the church around the world, We're all doing uniting the same together. Thing. Yeah. It's incredible. Even the Eastern Orthodox church out there in, in, in the wild, <laughs> all we're all doing the same thing. Um, I mean, and it's, it's just beautiful. We're, we're a global church, so we're all different in every way. I'm nothing like you. I've never been invited to a, an Indian <laughs> wedding like how you have, but like uh, we all love the same Lord. So it's just incredible to be a part of this all together as a church family. Yeah. yeah, I'd encourage you to take this week as an opportunity to perhaps be a little more vocal and public with your faith. Yes. Everything around us is loud and bold and unashamed. And I don't think your faith is something that has to be hidden. In fact, scripture would teach us that it isn't no. to be hidden. Yeah. And on a week like this, such a triumphant week, perhaps you have an opportunity maybe to share a little bit about your faith with someone around you. Maybe invite someone to church. I just yeah. invited someone to Easter service yesterday. Nice. And I was like, hey, we would love to have you at church. And 
I'll even say for me, I have very little embarrassment, very little like that I worry about, but even still there's that moment of vulnerability when you're about to invite someone to church and you consider what are they gonna think yeah. about me saying this, but then I had to remind myself like it doesn't actually matter because I know that God loves them and yeah. he has purpose for them. So what an opportunity to share your faith this week and maybe let someone know about Easter at City of Life. Yeah, Pastor Jeff is gonna preach an incredible word today on the topic of Palm Sunday, Jesus entering into Jerusalem before he kind of dies for yeah. our sin and he's just gonna kind of kick it off. Uh, it's gonna be really incredible. So get ready. Service is about to start in just a few seconds. Uh, what can they do to get ready for the service? Well, since you're at home, you can take off your shoes like we were saying. Get ready to really dance and worship and sing. Call the kids over. Silence the distractions. Take this opportunity to focus on what God has done and being a part of it with your church family. Yeah. We love you, church. Let's get ready to worship. See you guys. Good morning, City of Life. Are we ready to worship on Palm Sunday? Woo! I give you my attention, all my focus, pushing off the limits. In this moment, I feel your spirit moving all around me. Come and have your way. I'm looking at the troubles you're reviving. The speak inside of my soul. You're calling me to levels that are higher. I can see your face.
Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you that you're here and the privilege we have, God, to be with you today. God was there at the beginning, his spirit brooding like a dove, spoke the earth into existence, formed creation that he loved. Man was born of perfect image, made to be a friend of God, meant to dwell within his presence. Yeah, it's where we all belong, Holy Spirit. All we need is more of you. We want more of you. Holy Spirit, all we need is more of you, we want more of you, when 
sin and spoiled creation the creator sent a flood on the cusp of new beginning he again released the dove and after all the searching it found a place to land on christ the perfect son who would redeem it all again and looking for the branches it landed on The dove of heaven rest upon the Christ in me. Let the dove of heaven rest upon the Christ.
our congregation today and he's not done yet. You can greet someone around you, say hello. And also, before you are seated, we have a very special request for you today. We ask that you take your phones out at this time and scan the QR code on the screen. You know, as Christians, we have a responsibility to share the good news of the gospel. And what better way than to invite someone to our Easter experience next weekend. So you can take your phones out at this time, scan this QR code, and it's going to take you to a link that has all of our church graphics for our Easter weekend. And it's as easy as you downloading the graphic. You can share that in a group text to your friends and family. You can share that on social media, but help us get the word out about the good news that Jesus is risen, amen? Amen, we're excited to see this room filled with your friends and family on Easter weekend. And hey, if you are new here, we would love to connect with you. Our welcome center is right outside our double doors, outside of the foyer, and our team has a gift for you. If it's your first time here, let's connect. And if you're watching online, thank you for being here. You can visit col.tv slash connect. We love you guys so, so much. Thank you for being at City of Life Church today. Hello, church family. It's so good to be here on Palm Sunday. My name is Pastor Madi, and I get to lead you today as we continue to worship the Lord with our giving. Amen? You know, worship is an exchange. We give praises to God, and in return, he gives us his peace, his presence. And it's the same thing when we give, when we give our money, when we give out of our resource, because we're saying, God, we're choosing to trust you today. I want to control, sometimes we want to control what we have, right? Because money equals security, equals provision. But really, if you take a moment to think about it, when we're giving our tithe, when we're giving our offering, we're saying, God, I choose to trust you with what I think is the right thing, but I'm gonna release that mentality and I'm gonna trust you. I've had this idea for a while now and I'm excited to share it, but we see this idea of God really blessing us but also asking us to reserve something. And even in the Garden of Eden, God said, you can have all of the trees, all of the fruit, except for one. And what did the enemy do? He lied, he lied to Eve, he tricked her. And that's really what the enemy is doing to us until this, to this day where he's trying to say, don't give your 10%, don't give your offering, you need that. You're the one that's in control. You made that money. You worked so hard. And I want to encourage you today to not let yourself be fooled by the mentality of the world. Don't let yourself be fooled the way Eve was fooled. We see in the wilderness God providing manna. And what did he say? Take just enough. But what did some of the Israelites do? They reserved it. They hid it because they, they weren't trusting they thought, we've been starving for such a long time. I just need to reserve this. And I want to release you from that mentality today and let you know that when you give something to the Lord, he's going to bless you. And it's not, he's not trying to withhold something from you. He's inviting you into relationship with him. He's inviting you to trust him. You know, as believers, we say all the time, Christianity is not about religion. It's about relationship. And this exchange is the most actionable thing we can do. Say, God, we give you our worship. We give you what 10% of what we make. I'm gonna reserve one day out of the week to come and gather with believers because this is a relationship. So today, I wanna encourage you to be givers. And I want to read this promise from Philippians 4.19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He will provide everything you need. So today, if you're wrestling with that, 
God is inviting you into relationship with him today. So there's a few ways to give. You can give with the amount, the number, by texting um, a dollar amount to the number on the screen. You can click that give button if you're watching online or go to col.tv slash give. Or there's boxes in the back for cash or check gift. Let's go ahead and bow our head and pray. God, we just thank you so much that you are inviting us into relationship today. God, you are not here to withhold some blessing. On the contrary, you're here to give us blessing, God. God, we come against the enemy today. He will not lie to us anymore. He will not fool us that we're the ones that are in control, God, but we release that today and we choose to trust you. We choose to obey you and we choose to do what your word says, to bring the, t the tithe into the storehouse, God. We will do that today. Bless every giver in this room today. We love you. We honor you. In your name we pray, amen. What's up, church family? I'm Pastor Justin. My name is Nadia. And we want to thank everyone who showed up to our helicopter candy drop this past Saturday. I don't know about your kids, but my son had a blast scavenging for candy on the field. Yeah, all the kids were busy searching for the Easter Bunny the entire time. It was awesome. We also want to thank the Army of Dream Team volunteers that it took to make this event possible. We love you and are grateful to build the kingdom alongside you. Church family, check out this recap video of the day. That's so awesome. Well, today kicks off the start to Holy Week here at City of Life. It's Palm Sunday and we're celebrating together Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Then, coming up this week on March 28th is Maundy Thursday. We invite everyone to join us in participating in an at-home foot washing ceremony. We've provided a guide for the ceremony that you can follow with your family and friends at cwo.tv slash Easter. We invite everyone to join us in person on March 29th at 7 p.m. for our Good Friday Cross and Communion service. During our time together, we'll remember the ultimate sacrifice made by Jesus on the cross and participate in Holy Communion. Then we are headed into our Easter experience weekend. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Now we invite you to celebrate the resurrection of Christ with us here at City of Life Church. We have several service time options and now new locations hey. for you and your entire family to celebrate Easter with us. On our Kissimmee campus, we'll have our Easter experience happening both on Saturday, March 30th at 6 p.m. and also on Sunday, March 31st, Easter Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. Then our Dr. Phillips campus will meet at 10.30 a.m. at Southwest Middle School. In honor of it being our launch day, we'll also have an Easter egg hunt after service along with candy bar, yeah. photo booth, and of course, the Easter Bunny. Yeah, for sure. It is gonna be an incredible Easter season and we can't wait for you to join us. Here's a personal invite from our senior pastors. Hey guys, Pastors Jeffrey and Amy Smith from City of Life Church. I want to ask you a quick question. I'm thinking about our Easter services. Have you ever felt like you have run out of hope? This year, our Easter theme is called Unbury Me. And there are many things in life that just make us feel like we have no answers. We're never going to get over this situation that we're going through. Maybe you're struggling, feeling that way. Easter is a time for hope. And we want to encourage you today to let you know there is hope for you. We really hope you come check out one of our Easter services. When can they check it out? We have so many opportunities for you and your family to come and connect with us on Easter. Starting with a Thursday night online service, then we have a Good Friday service, and then three opportunities to join us on Easter weekend, starting with Saturday night and two Sunday morning. And we're very excited that we are launching our Dr. Phillips campus on Easter Sunday at 10.30. All the information will be in the details. 
but we can't wait to see you. We believe you are going to find hope this Easter. Join us at City of Life. Something else really special that's happening on Easter Sunday is the release of our City of Life live worship single, Unbury yes. Me. You can listen to this City of Life original anywhere that music is streamed, and we hope it is an encouragement to you. This is just a taste of what is to come as we work toward the release of our entire live worship album that we recorded last month. Yeah, the month of April is going to be a big month here at City of Life, and something we're really excited about is our Saturate Baptism service happening across both of our campuses on Sunday, April 7th. Our service will have a special emphasis on expressing the importance of baptism in a believer's life. We'll have powerful worship and baptism pools inside of the auditorium. This is a perfect day for you to invite your loved ones and make a public display of your faith in Christ. Amazing. April certainly feels like a month of leaning in. And on April 14th, we launch our brand new path to membership and serving here at City of Life. With our new model, you'll be able to become a member by week one through our Connect class and onboard onto our dream team through our week two and week three contribute and commit classes. We've made it easier than ever for you to be an integrated part of our church family. We love you so much, church family. Thank you for being here today. And, and welcome, welcome home. Come on, church, let's stand and continue to worship. Jesus is good on Palm Sunday. Come on, let's give him a praise today. Hallelujah. They shouted Hosanna, so let's shout Hosanna. Come on, Hosanna in the highest. Praise you, Lord. Come on, one more time. A great praise for the Lord, for Jesus, King Jesus today. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to someone next to you and say, I'm glad you came to church on Palm Sunday. You can have a seat today. What a great atmosphere in this place today. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, I expect someone to get excited today. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? My goodness, there is nothing like the name of Jesus. There is no other name that can compare to the name of Jesus. And we're here today to celebrate and lift up that name. We're here today to talk about one of the most important elements of our faith is this day that led up. We can't understand, if you just you know, turn on a movie, you know, three quarters of the way into the movie and you try to figure out what's going on, it's unlikely that you're gonna understand what it really means without the context of what's taking place. And Palm Sunday is a day where we, it puts into context what the cross actually is, and it puts into context what the, the resurrection and, and, and the tomb actually represents and what it means. And it puts into context the way our Christian lives are supposed to look on a weekly basis. So I'm really excited that you're here today. Those of you that are watching online, 
Can we give a big hand for our online campus that's watching? We love you. We appreciate you. And next week, we are going to get used to welcoming our Dr. Phillips campus. So let's put a big hand together for Dr. Phillips. Every week when I say that, let's make our Dr. Phillips campus feel so, so welcome because they're going to be connecting and watching this particular service. So this service needs to feel really akin. And all, by the way, for those of you that are from the Dr. Phillips area or live anywhere uh, kind of north of that area, that is a really great location over at Southwest Middle School on Dr. Phillips Boulevard. And we are so excited about what God is doing there. That service is gonna be at 10.30 every week. I would really just encourage you as part of our church family, get to promoting all of these events uh, this coming week. This is, this is the most amazing week to just be a witness using what platforms God has given you, whether it's social media, word of mouth, letting people know. And really put it out there that we've got a Dr. Phillips launch coming up this week, our brand new campus and all of our various services that these guys talked about. By the way, before I get into my actual message for the day, can we give a huge round of applause for our volunteers that helped put the helicopter candy drop together. That is truly one of the most incredible events. If you did not get a chance to go yesterday, what an unbelievable job this church did of representing Jesus to this community. Uh, it was so wonderful to see people that are, well, first of all, I love the fact that we had so many people from City of Life, and it's an event that I'm happy that we have something that our children feel valued and loved, and the gospel presentation, my gosh, that, that went on there, the, the dance, the worship that they did was incredible. And then you've got this uh, event where all these little kids are able to feel really special and loved, and our team just represented Jesus so well with all those new, new people that were here. So I just really wanna honor and appreciate all of our incredible volunteers that took time out of their schedule to pour into people. It's always worth it to pour into others. By the way, look at uh, the person on your right and the person on your left and say, I'm gonna be talking to you a lot today, so I just wanna get to know you and introduce yourself. <coughs> That's the way it's gonna be today, all right? So our text for the day is Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. And it says this, Now having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or... There it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Okay, remember I told you you're gonna be talking to someone. Look at the first person and say, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Look at the person on the other side. Say, it's neither here nor there, but it's already here. Oh, I know that just sounds wild. Today... I'm gonna to talk to you on Palm Sunday something that is called the non-triumphal entry. The non-triumphal entry. We call this the triumphal entry, but today we're gonna to talk about the non-triumphal entry on Palm Sunday. Father, bless this time together. I pray that your word comes alive, energizes every heart in this room, that every person in this place would have a deeper revelation, Jesus, of who you are, of what you came to accomplish, Lord, of the mandate you put out for us, Lord, to understand who you are and what you represent and to not only understand it before we get into it, but that we're to carry that with us everywhere we go, with every decision we make and everything we do. Help us to do that, to get that revelation today of who you are in your word. And we thank you so much for what you're doing right now in our church, what you're doing in the world, God, but also this coming week. Let this be an incredible week that points to Easter. Let Easter be just an outpouring of your love. We pray that people get saved at, the, at churches all over the world, but here at City of Life, Lord, let people come to know you in a way like we've never seen before. We thank you for your revival, Holy Spirit, what you're doing. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Remember when Jesus said stuff like, in John chapter three, verse three, he said, I tell you that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God. And we, as human beings, get very focused on things that we can observe and experience with our senses. We are looking for someone to revolutionize our lives that represents everything that we believe in. 
And everyone wanted Jesus to be this exact kind of leader, but he would always give us answers and hints about the kingdom that do not live up to what we actually expect. Nobody really wants to hear that. When you're saying, where is the kingdom? He goes, well, it's not really the kind of kingdom that you're expecting. That's kind of a let down answer. If you're saying, hey, tell me a little bit about the kingdom. And he's like, well, you're in it. That, that's kind of disappointing. It's like, when are we going on vacation? You're on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's like if someone was trying to teach you the lesson that vacation is a state of mind. <laughs> and you're going, when are we leaving on vacation? And they go, well, you know, we're on it right now. Sorry. It's not the exact kind of place. As a matter of fact, when it comes to things that we expect, we can really get let down if we don't use the right attitude. Uh, Recently, my family got to go on a, an incredible vacation to Hawaii. Uh, one of the amazing things, remember when we told you that uh, a foundation because of Jude got sent us to Hawaii? Well, we got to go on that trip, and it was truly unbelievable. But the truth is, when you're in Hawaii, it is beautiful. But nobody stuck one of them flower things. What do they call them things? <laughs> nobody put a lay on my neck. When I, came, when I landed, I didn't have like a welcome team that came out. Yes, it's beautiful, but you have to be in the right state of mind to be able to enjoy all the beauty that's around you. If you're expecting that something is going to flip and, and just something's going to happen that is going to revolutionize everything about your life, I promise you, you will miss the kingdom of God. You have to have the right spirit. You have to have the right heart. As a matter of fact, when Jesus said, you got to actually be born again. You got to be born into this kingdom. It's not like someone can say, well, explain this to me. And you can explain it. And they go, okay, I get it. I get it. No, no, no. You can't get it unless you're born into it. So what I want to set you up for today as we're talking about Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry, what people call the triumphal entry that's really kind of the way it's, it's worded in, in, in Bibles, like the pre-chapter things, the triumphal entry. And when we look at this idea of, of Jesus coming into Jerusalem on Passover, and we, we think about what this represents, I would like to break it down in advance before we get into the exact story. And I would just like to, to, to let you know that there are kingdoms that are at war with each other. We have the kingdom of the world which kind of represents all of our preconceived ideas about success, about what we want life to look like for ourselves. Everyone in this room has some picture of what you think success is, whether it's a number of followers on social media, whether it's being celebrated and loved by people, whether it's receiving some kind of award, whether it's having, you know, the, the, the woman of your dreams that falls in love with you or, or you, know, you know, getting a certain kind of house or a certain kind of car. Everyone has some preconceived, what, what you think the political climate would be in our world in the perfect scenario if this person is the leader of this. We've all got these ideas about what our kingdom would look like. Jesus came to flip all of that on its head. And we're not very excited about it. But I will tell you that that is what Palm Sunday is all about. To show you this and to illustrate this, I want to use a story from the Old Testament that really shows us the danger of buying in to the kind of kingdom that we wish we had. Look, I'm just going to tell you honestly, we would all, you say, well, I'm not interested in that kind of kingdom. No, if you could have Jesus, that was, the, how many people would take right now Jesus as the president of the United States? If you could have Jesus as the president, like actual Jesus. So, okay, look, we're getting excited about that. We're like, yes, we would want that. Like, we wish that, we wish that our king was the actual king of the world. Why? Because we know that if he were the president or he were over everything, he would do everything the perfect way, the way that we wish, and we know it would be safe, we wouldn't have to worry about anything. We want someone to lead us in a way that is perfect, that lives up to all of our ideals. But what Jesus is warning us is be careful the longings that your heart had toward wanting something right now the way you want it because you're not going to get it with me. So be very careful. So he gives us an illustration of what happens to the kind of kingdoms that we actually long for. And it says that King Belshazzar 
gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. This is like the highest level of worldly luxury. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and the silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. So not only is this the kingdom that is an earthly kingdom, it's a kingdom that has robbed the principles and the items of a godly kingdom. Much like the world that we live in right now. And it says, he asked them to bring in the things that have been taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, he must be crazy. He's not only got wives, he's got concubines. He got, he got multiple. I don't, it's hard to you know, be married to one wife. I can't imagine how this guy's married. He got multiple wives, concubines. So you know the kingdom, if, if you're gonna please Somebody, this is not the right way to please somebody. His wives and concubines, so they all might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles and his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the God of gold and silver, iron, wood, and stone. So they're getting drunk. There's crazy sexual implications here. There's, there's intoxication. There's wealth. There's all the pleasures of life that people could imagine. Affluence in every level. Authority at the highest level. I mean, just within this one story, almost anything that we can think of that we would want by human standards in our own way is represented in this story. And by the way, it's not a story. This happened. This is real. It's not like a fable. And it says in verse five, suddenly, the f now, no, first of all, suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall, at which point one of his wives looked at him and said, what kind of wine is this? Like, this is weird. Like, this is like a different level. But no, they all knew it wasn't what they were drinking. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote, his face turned pale. And he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. So what is this? This is the man that represents everything that you could want in this life. He is the embodiment of everything that you could want in this life if your dreams were to work out right now. He's got it all. And what's happening? The moment that he sees a theophany, a representation of God in a physical form, the fear of God comes upon him. And he realizes that everything he has is nothing compared to the power that he is beholding. It says God sent the hand that wrote on the wall, and this is what was written. Me, to kill and Peres, and this is what the words mean. The first one, the word mean, M-E-N-E, -E, means God has numbered the days of your rule, and they don't add up. To kill means you have been weighed on the scale, and homie, you don't weigh very much. This is a heavyweight match, and you're a little lightweight that's in there prancing around, acting like you got everything figured out, and you're about to get knocked out. Finally, Perez, it says, your kingdom has been divided up and handed over to the Medes and Persians. So let me translate what earthly kingdoms will get you. The first word, mean, means earthly kingdoms have limited time. They may look great. They may seem appealing. You may work out in the gym over and over to get them but they're limited in time. Wait till Thanksgiving rolls around and you eat an entire red velvet cake by yourself. You can't see them no more, I promise you that. To kill, it means you have no value. It means that, buddy, you came to the banker and you got a lot of monopoly money. You've built up a lot of wealth, but it's the wrong kind of wealth. You've been searching for something that can't buy you an answer. I got news for you. When you're laying in a hospital bed and you get something, a doctor that comes in and tells you you got something that man can't solve, how many followers you have on Instagram ain't going to be very much comfort to you. Only true, true wealth in God 
wealth in Christ, only value in God can get you through a moment like that. And finally, Perez, you have no inheritance, no longevity. Your kingdom is going to be divided up and given to someone else. You say, why are you talking about this on Palm Sunday? Because Jesus was contrasting the kind of kingdom that we want, which is this kind of kingdom. You say, well, I don't want that. Well, you spent all night on Instagram looking at all the things you want last night. Or on Facebook, liking, putting hearts by all the things that you want to have someday. This is the world that we live in. How many extra things you got in your Amazon cart for when that paycheck comes in? It's already in the cart. You ready to go, baby? <laughs> Just get, put that money in there. I'm going to click buy now, I promise you. We live this way. And what, what the Lord is trying to teach us through this incredible theophany is it, can I just tell you something real quick? The writing's on the wall. In, in the most literal sense, where do you think that phrase came up? The writing is on the wall. Figure it out for yourself. All the things that we search for, all the things that we are so desperate for, you know, I, I, I have been around in my life some people who, uh, who, who have a lot, a lot of stuff. I mean, even, even, you know, even people who are, there, there was a time a few years ago, I was around someone who had like the third most Instagram followers in the world. I'm sitting there in this person's house and, and with, with my family. And when, when you get to a certain place in life, you would think that everything in the world Having everything in the world would give you some kind of peace, some kind of comfort. But I'm just going to tell you, being around all the different kinds of people that I've been around in my life, I have never met someone who found that kind of peace in the kingdoms of the world. As a matter of fact, it seems that there is a more hollow spot and a more hollow place in the hearts of the people that have the most without God. And we have to be aware that When you search after the things of this world, your time is limited, you have no value, and you will have no longevity. And and please think about that for a second. We all want to leave a mark. When we're gone someday, we want to know that we've made an impression. But what the Bible is telling us here is that no matter, it doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter how many statues you get made for yourself after you're gone. If it wasn't for the kingdom of God, you have no eternal longevity. Wow, one person liked that over there. That's okay. Thank you. I'm glad you liked that. So Jesus is teaching us a different kind of kingdom. Listen, okay, I don't know if you're going to like this. You're probably not. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus says, look, I'm sending you out. Here's the kind of kingdom that you signed up for. I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. So... Be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves, but beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and flogged, beaten with whips in the synagogues. I don't see anyone like, yeah, sign me up for that part. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry how you will respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right times. For it's not you that will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And all nations will hate you. Because you are my followers, but everyone who endures till the end will be saved. Who would sign up for that kind of kingdom? The answer is somebody that believes that Jesus is who he says he is. Then we must redefine what the kingdom actually looks like. I love the analogy that is used in Matthew chapter 13 when it says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought the field. Verse 45 says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. 
in both of these examples, somebody finds something that is priceless. It's of great value. And what they do is they go and sell everything they have to purchase that thing, which is so priceless to them. Now, it doesn't mean, oh, well, you can't buy the kingdom. No, but what it's telling you is the kingdom will cost you everything that you have. There is no other option. And what it means is when you sell everything you have, you got nada left. You have nothing left. All you've got is the kingdom. And all the wealth you will ever find is found where? All the wealth is, that you will ever find is found in the kingdom. You can't go back and buy some other stuff because you don't have any more currency anymore. You already sold it all to get the kingdom. So you better find your future in the kingdom. And what happens is a lot of people say they have the kingdom, but they've never sold everything they had to get it. They've never traded in all the things that they're clutching onto to find the kingdom. So they don't know what the kingdom really is. It costs you everything you had. Je Jesus talked about the kingdom so much. He said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom. In Luke 4, Matthew 16, he says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 16, he says, truly I tell you that some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew 13, he says, because, the disciple says, why do you speak in parables? He said, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Matthew 13, he says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. Matthew 23 said, woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites, you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. So what do we have today? Why am I talking about this on Palm Sunday? Because Palm Sunday is the culmination of two different worldviews that are crashing together. When Jesus decides to ride in on a donkey, on the foal of a donkey, what he is doing is he is fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah. Everyone knew the scriptures. Jesus was saying and declaring himself king. He was, when he came in, he said, I am the king that Israel has been waiting for. There's no way around this. It wasn't vague. It was very, very clear. Matthew 21 is where we find the story. It says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. And it goes on to say, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. And here's what was spoken in Zechariah 9, 9. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Verse six, the disciples went and did had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted hosanna the son of david to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest heaven when jesus entered jerusalem the whole city was stirred and said who is this the crowd answered this is jesus the prophet from nazareth in galilee so by the, by the way, Jesus for years, if you read through the New Testament, what you will find after Jesus does miracles is he tells people, don't tell anybody about this. It's really interesting that Jesus, although he is fully God, he's here on earth understanding that if people begin to know who I actually am, that this is, that, that I am the son of God, that God that is declaring myself king, that is, I'm declaring myself Messiah. I'm going to do Messiah stuff, but I'm not going to use messianic language until a certain time because it's not time yet. Look at someone next to you and say, it's not time. That's, really, that's, a, that's another great message. We should just learn that about our lives. If it wasn't time for Jesus, I'm just gonna tell you something right now, honey, it ain't time for you necessarily. You gotta be careful in life, believing that everything is about now, now, now. Jesus had enough sense during his ministry years to let everyone know, hey, don't tell anybody yet. Don't tell anybody yet. And it says here in Luke 18, it says Jesus took the 12 aside and said we're going to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the son of man will be fulfilled.
So now he's even getting explicit with them, letting them know what's about to happen. I'm talking about the crucifixion. I'm talking about the resurrection. I'm just telling you guys straight up, his disciples did not understand. They did not get this. When he was, I mean, imagine if your buddy was like in three days, you know, the son of man's gonna die. He'll be raised up again. In your head, you're going, he can't be talking literally about himself. He wouldn't be talking about his own death like that. I don't want him to die. This is what they're thinking. But he says, they'll flog him. They'll kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. Once again, verse 34, I love the way the Bible is just honest. It says, the disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. As Jesus approached Jericho, okay, so this is all in the same context here. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David. That is messianic language. That is saying, Jesus, the chosen one, the Messiah, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And if Jesus did not reject this praise publicly, it would be blasphemous. But Jesus was done with all of that. Jesus was at the point now where he's saying, hey, it's time for you to decide who I am. Because I'm going to declare openly from this point on who I am and why I came. What my purpose is, it will not be veiled any longer. And when they cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he started shouting all the more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he said, what do you want me to do for you? And the man said, Lord, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received, come on, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. So here we see someone starting to praise Jesus as the Messiah. Now look, I don't doubt that there are a lot of people here today or people that are watching online that confess that Jesus is the Messiah. You believe intellectually that Jesus is the Messiah. But what I'm asking you and what Jesus is demanding that we do is to ask the question, am I ready to deal with those implications in my personal life? Am I ready to let those things reflect in the way I live, the things that I believe in? Now he's coming into town, the busiest festival in Jewish culture, Passover. He's coming into Jerusalem. It is just, uh, it's, it's so volatile. You've got Rome. You've got the Sanhedrin. You've got the Sadducees that hate Jesus and the Pharisees that hate Jesus and understand what he is doing, understand that his miracles can no longer be explained. It's all coming to a head. And now Jesus is about to declare himself king of the Jews and king of all nations. And he did it in the most Jewish way imaginable. This story of Zechariah 9.9, who would do this if you weren't king? But Jesus is the king. So isn't it wonderful? He rides in on this little foal. And just so you know, I, I've heard many commentators talk about what this would have been like. Basically, they're saying that there is a high probability that as Jesus was entering, based on this prophecy, his feet would have been dragging on the ground. You know that kings, worldly kings, when they used to come in on their parades, they would be on the highest horse possible. You ever heard that phrase, come down off your high horse? That's the whole point, is you want the horse to be as big as possible to show off your power and to show off your glory. And what Jesus is saying in this non-triumphal entry, it's not really triumphant. We'll see the triumphal entry someday. We'll get the opportunity to worship together when we're able to worship King Jesus the way he deserves. But what this was is almost a parody of a triumphal entry. Think about who's there, peasants and children. This is not the most majestic royal thing imaginable. This is very common people. And they're shouting Hosanna. I love that word Hosanna. What do you think the word Hosanna means? Just say to your neighbor, to the person next to you, ask them what you think it means. Come on, just say, what do you think it means? Tell somebody what, what you think it means. What do you think it means? Did anyone say praise? Did anyone say praise? Okay, well, it means 
save now. Save now. That first part, Hosea, means praise, na, now. Hosanna, Hosanna. Save now. So when they were praising him, they weren't, it wasn't like, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the heart. It actually was save now. And, and, and I heard one commentator say, this is not the kind of word that you use when you are drowning. This is the word that you use when you're drowning and you see your lifeguard swimming in to save you. There is a distinction in the way this word was written and the way this word was used. So they're saying, I see my savior. They're having a revelation that this humble king is their savior. Oh man, it's so humble. It's so beautiful. It's so Jesus. And you know, he's going, hey, I ain't trying to impress you. You, you want a big high horse? Go, find, go, go to Pilate. Go find somebody else. I ain't going to do it. You, you want the biggest place to live in? Go somebody else. You, you want all the wealth in the world? You want all the things that money can buy? Go find another kingdom. That's not what this kingdom is about. As a matter of fact, you want a kingdom? You want a kingdom right now? Okay, I'll give you one. You're in it. You said you wanted one now. You're in it. He flips it all on its head, doesn't he? That's who he is. He said, I'm not trying to impress you, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to love you, and I'm going to serve you, and then I'm going to let you choose. I'm going to give everything I have for you, and I'm going to see if you recognize it. I'm going to see how that moves you. I'm going to see what, how you think it feels to have somebody lay everything on the line for your weakness, for your sin, and to give you my righteousness, and I'm going to see if that moves you to action. Jesus says, I'm not asking you to have faith. I'm asking you to go out and do faith everywhere. I'm asking you to do some stuff for the kingdom. I love how he interacts with Peter on this issue. Matthew chapter 16 says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say the son of man is? They replied, Th think about this question. He is the son of man. He is asking, who do people say the son of man is? And it says, they replied, some say John the Baptist. So giving a report to Jesus about what everyone in the community, who they think the Messiah is, some think it's John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he says, but what about you? He says, who do you say I am? Come on, look at somebody next to you and say, who do you say he is? That's, that's one to ask both sides. Ask the other person too. Say, who do you say he is? What a question. And I hear all these people are like, Peter was such a mess up. Well, yeah, so am I. Without being rude, so are you. That's the whole point. That's why Peter is so awesome. He didn't get everything right. But my God, he got, he got this answer right. He says, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied something to him that is something that relates to every one of us in this room. If we are ever to effectively confess and know who Jesus is, Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. What he's saying is that you will never have a revelation of what the kingdom is or who Jesus is unless God gives it to you. That's why the Bible says no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I've explained this before. I, had a, I actually had an encounter with someone in my 20s who was telling me that it was physically impossible to say the words Jesus is Lord. Like you couldn't even read it. Like an unsaved person couldn't read that. I said, dude, that is so ridiculous. I don't even know what, where you're coming up with. I mean, I'm having an argument with this person. It's, it, says, it says you can't say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I was like, don't you understand that this means that you can't say it effectively. You can't say it in a way that leads to eternal life unless the Holy Spirit gives you the revelation. I'm like, why can't you say that? It, it, but that's re really what it means. It means that unless God gives you a revelation that Jesus is Lord, you will never have that revelation that is effective in 
in you knowing God and having an experience with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I think that this is so wild here where it goes on to say in Matthew 21, after the triumphal entry, it says, when the chief priest said the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David. The children, these are kids. He is being worshiped by kids. A king that instead of all the nobles and dignitaries that are worshiping him, it's just kids. That are pray- that, that's why I was just, I was out there weeping yesterday when I was watching our kids do this amazing dance. They're praising the Lord. I'm like, there's more purity in that than in most churches in America. That's incredible. I mean, the, the children are praising Jesus. Why? They see something real. They know how to see through all the pretense. But all the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw what he was doing. They said, they were indignant. They said, do you hear what these children are saying? And I love this, and I've, I've probably told you this before, but when I read the Bible sometimes, I mean, I'm a writer, so you know, I, I kind of imagine, and when you're writing a script or screenplay, sometimes you'll write the phrase, a beat, or a, a slight pause, or, or something. You do something for emphasis, but I just know. I mean, it's not in there. I'm just gonna admit it's not in there, but I absolutely know that I 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 know that when they asked him, do you hear what these kids are singing? Hosanna in the high. Do you hear what they're saying about you? I imagine he was like. <laughs> yes. I just imagine that it's just the longest pause. Because I think his whole point is, oh, not only do I know. You can't stop it. You're going to have to deal with it. I I came for this reason to show you that this is happening. As a matter of fact, he goes on, he says, from the lips of children's and infant children's. My gosh, Jeff. From the lips of children and infants. Children is children's. I'm just letting you know that. Children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany where he spent the night. Man, he takes a long pause, and then he doubles down by quoting Psalm 8, 1 through 2. They said, hey, these kids are praising you. They're treating you like you're the Lord. And then he quotes this passage of Scripture, which starts out and said, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. You have put your glory upon the heavens from the lips of children and infants you have established praise because of your adversaries that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. So Jesus is going, oh, you don't don't even know the half of it. I'm the king, all right. I came to lead a brand new kingdom that you don't know. And he's calling himself God. I love this, Luke 19, 37 through 40. It says, when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. What they, what, what they meant is, they're acting like you're the Lord. Rebuke them. Rebuke them now. If you don't want to be blasphemous, rebuke them. Ooh, another. Oh, this, this answer is so good. It's crazy. How come I can't think of stuff like this? Well, I'm not Jesus. That's why. Verse 4, he he says, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I'm going to get my praise because I am the Lord. You can't stop this praise. There's nothing you can do about it. He's saying you may get them to be quiet. Have you ever heard the phrase dumber than a bag of rocks? That's a real phrase. I used to hear that phrase all the time. Man, dumber, that's a dumber than a bag. He's dumber than a bag of rocks. Think about that phrase, dumber than a bag of rocks. You got zero intellect in that bag. It don't matter how many rocks you get in in that bag, they can't think their way out of a bad situation. Why? They're rocks. Dumber than a bag of, and isn't it interesting 
that Jesus used this exact example to talk about the praises of people, of his people. And he said, hey, if, if they don't give me praise, this bag of rocks will. Because I created all of this. And whether you think it has intelligence or not, all of it shouts my praise every single day. And you're going to hear it soon enough. Because this is a kingdom that is here. Somebody say, it's here. Somebody say, it. look at someone next to you say, it's here right now. Come on, look at the person on the other side. Say, it's here right now in your midst. My gosh, what a message. Not my message. I'm talking about the message of the triumphal entry. This is life-changing stuff. He says, I've come to preach this to anybody who's willing to listen. But what he's offering is different than what we want. We want someone that will lead us that we agree with on every level. A president, a boss, a pastor, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse, a friend, a coworker. See, we live in a culture that's so messed up that cannot handle disagreement. We agree with someone about everything until we disagree with them about something, then we can't agree with them on anything. That's actually pretty good. I, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> it's true, though. Jude's looking at me because he asked a question yesterday, and I, I gave that answer. It just, came, it just came out, and I gave that answer, and he was like, wow, Dad, that was good. I said, I think I'll preach that tomorrow. That's it's pretty good. <laughs> it's kind of the world that we live in. But, but what Jesus is putting in front of us is calling out this problem that we have. We want the perfect leader in human form that embodies everything that we wish for, but we don't have it. We've got a lot of flawed people. That's why in the kingdom, we need to have grace for others. We need to understand that people are not perfect. Though we're representing a perfect God, people are imperfect. Stop looking for the perfect church. It doesn't exist. Stop looking for the perfect pastor. They don't exist. The perfect, le oh, you didn't have to amen that one so loud. I mean, it's like, bro, jeez. Trying to be vulnerable here. <laughs> No, I love you, man. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's so cool. I, I shake his hand every week. But yeah, no, I mean, you're right, though. I mean, it's true. <laughs> it's totally true. We need, we need grace because we got to keep our eyes on the fact that the kingdom of God is perfect, but we as citizens of the kingdom are a work in progress. We're being sanctified to be made more like Jesus, and there's a lot of things that we're not going to get in this life. We got to simply understand. So stop chasing after a kingdom that the handwriting is already on the wall. It's falling apart. Because the kingdom that Jesus came to teach us about is one that we actually don't even want. So what do we have to do? We have to teach our heart what it wants. We have to tell our heart what is right. That's why when the Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, What's happening there is David is telling his soul how it is going to be. Put your hand on your heart and say, soul, some things are going to change around here. You are going to praise the Lord. You are going to believe that you are a part of a kingdom that is all around you, that is here right now. Now look at the person next to you and say, I'm not going to tell you anything. Okay, that's because I wanted you to tell yourself. That's what happened. You got to stop telling other people stuff. Tell yourself. Tell your soul how it's going to be. Can I get an amen from somebody? Tell your soul how it's going to be. There's only one throne on your heart, and Jesus won't compete for it. He won't compete for it. He already, his work is done. He leaves you with the same question after that little parade on the donkey, the, the palm branches, they're waving palm branches. There is a seller. I'm not saying it's non-triumphal. It, it's triumphal in a symbolic sense, in, in the ultimate, beautiful symbolic sense. So I'm not devaluing how wonderful it is because if you're using symbolism, it's the most gorgeous thing that you could ever imagine because what it's saying is this is a humble parade. This is a, this is a parody of what the world loves. So it, it couldn't be more beautiful in that way. But what it's also trying to show Stop chasing after the things that we can see. 
Stop chasing after the things that we lust after because they won't fill you up. Jesus showed up to dismantle our ideas of what a king should be. Nobody wanted that kind of kingdom and neither do we. We want somebody to fix everything. But today, I just encourage you, no matter what your expectations have been, is to pick up your palm branch. <laughs> pick up your palm branch on Palm Sunday and be one of the ones in that little humble parade that wave it and say, Hosanna, save me now, God. Save us now, save us now, save us now. I'm in the kingdom now. Everything's not perfect. Leaders aren't perfect. World's not perfect. My job's not perfect. Marriage is not perfect. Kids are not perfect. No, nothing, nothing really is exactly the way that I want it to be. But save now, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. I honor you. I worship you. I'm a, I'm a citizen of this kingdom. I get it. I'll wrap my heart around it. When I'm persecuted, when they put me in jail, when they lie about me, when, when, when I get comments on my, on my post because I said, hey, come to church this Sunday. This is Easter Sunday. It's the day we celebrate. the When everyone says all this, oh, you need to keep all that to yourself. When, when they say negative things about me, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm gonna praise you on this Palm Sunday because I believe in this kingdom because I believe in the king of this kingdom. And Jesus, you are the king. So I hope that that encourages you today. I hope it gets you excited about where this is going because we do know that Jesus ultimately, this was the thing that blew up to a level that it could no longer be avoided. And they killed him for this reason. And as a matter of fact, when I say they killed him, Jesus did say this. He said, nobody takes my life from me. He said, I lay it down on my own accord. And if I lay it down, I've got the power to take it up again. So, so he laid his own life down. But this is the thing that their anger came against him to the point of convicting him for something that he didn't even do. And we'll find next week when Jesus, with Jesus' interaction with Pilate, Pilate says, is, are you a king? He says, is this true? Tell me, tell me, I wanna know, are you a king? And Jesus said, you say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born. This is why I came. I'm a king. But I, I come from a different kind of kingdom. So we're going to see all that come to a head next week. Easter's going to be incredible. I really encourage you. If God's done something in your life today, tell somebody about it. Bring somebody with you next week. Tell people about our new campus. Tell people about what God is doing in your life. People need testimonies. The Bible says faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. So people need to hear the gospel message. They need to hear testimonies of people. So let what has happened in you be contagious today and spread to others. I ask that you would bow your heads and close your eyes for this moment. Those of you that are watching online, I wanna encourage you as well. I'd just like to ask that if you're here and you do not know the Lord, your heart is far from God, and you say, I wanna be a part of this kingdom now. I wanna trade in all the things that I have, all the wealth I've accumulated, and I wanna sell everything I have to go all in so that I can understand the kingdom. And what that means is it's time to turn our back on the past. There's no looking back once you go into the kingdom. There's nothing to go back to, you sold it all. Give me that revelation today, God, of going all in for this kingdom. And show me how to live it and to operate it in a way that's honoring you. And it starts by putting my faith in you, Lord Jesus, that you died from my sin you loved me and you cared for me. You came from heaven to earth to go to the cross, to take my sins with you, that by putting my faith in you, I would receive your righteousness and you would deal with the consequences of sin once and for all at the cross and that your resurrection demonstrated power and authority over sin and death once and for all, forevermore, that I have that same victory through your name. If that's you today and you wanna know the Lord, no one looking around, in this room or online, I just ask you that when I count to three, for you to lift your hands and on three, if that's you and you're watching online, type in that chat and say, I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If you're in this room on three, please put your hand in the air. I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is moving today. One, the Bible says now is the time of salvation. Two, I believe everyone in this room has been drawn here by God for this very moment. People's lives are about to change. Three, hands in the air. If that's you all over this building, hands going up. Every single section that I'm looking in has people with hands lifted. Praise the Lord. God sees your hands all over this room. I believe people are lifting their hands online and God is moving in your life. Could you repeat this prayer with me out loud? Say, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me, for going to the cross for my sins. 
for taking my sins to the grave and for resurrecting again so I could have eternal life. I put my faith in you, that you are my Lord and Savior, that you are my King, and I live in a kingdom that is here now. Teach me to operate effectively in this kingdom in a way that honors your name in everything I do. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you give God a great praise today? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not dismissed yet, so please do not leave. Pastor Jess is going to talk to you for a moment. I'm going to go to the back door, and I would love to shake your hand and say hello to you. Come on, we're celebrating all of you who made a decision for Christ today, and we wanna resource you with a free gift at our Welcome Center. And we wanna encourage you, tell someone about your decision and come back next weekend for our Easter experience. It's going to be incredible. We cannot wait to see you and your families there. But church, let's go ahead and stand on up and continue to worship. After our service is concluded today, we have our prayer team and covenant leaders here at the front ready to pray with you. But can we lift our hands and worship Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, church.